Rhythm is the maverick in the musical toolbox. Of all music's components, rhythm is the most independent. Even without a melody, a bass line or harmony, a rhythmic pattern can stand on its own two feet. Rhythm is the part of music that interacts most immediately and spontaneously with our bodies. Without it, music would be pleasant enough, but it would be brain food. With rhythm, though, music becomes hypnotic and sensuous. What is it about rhythm that makes it so irresistible? Why do we surrender to it so easily? In this program, I'm going to put it under the microscope. We're going to find out how rhythm works. Different music from different places and different times. But they all share the same appeal. They all make us want to tap our feet, get up and dance, and sway to the beat. Rhythm is addictive and intoxicating but it can also be fantastically complex, and we're going to explore its many forms in this program. At its core, though, there's one simple and fundamental ingredient. At the heart of all rhythm lies the concept of the beat, or the pulse. Our first sensation of pulse, of course, was that of our mother's heartbeat in the womb. But all mammals experience their mother's heartbeat, and only we humans like to dance, tap our feet, or play the castanets. It now seems more plausible that the key rhythmic moment for us Homo sapiens was when we got up off our knees, hands, and backsides and started to walk on just our two hind legs. established our basic beat with our two feet, we can of course alter the pulse by speeding it up or slowing it down. In music, speed has an Italian name, tempo. When you see words like andante, largo, allegro or presto to describe a piece of music, these are all indications of how fast or slow the pulse should be. The tempo of our pulse may depend on our mood, our energy level, our level of coolness, our sense of urgency, excitement or fear. Most of the most popular speeds of music are associated with various forms of forward movement. Shuffling, lolloping, jogging, hopping, pouncing, marching, bouncing or running. is so important that it's present in all types of music even if you can't hear it. Take this piece of classical music. Where's the rhythm? Where are the drums? Don't be misled. Rhythm in classical music is just as complex and vital as it is in other forms of music. It's just that the pulse is usually implied, not thrashed out. Of 
course, you could add drums if you really wanted to. Not an improvement, but it proves it has a beat. There are many benefits to making your pulse implicit rather than explicit, for hiding it away in the minds of your players and your listeners rather than shoving it in their faces. One benefit is you can have music of great serenity and tranquility to act as an antidote to exciting, adrenaline pumping beats with loads of percussion. A relaxing walk along the seashore at sunset, for example, rather than a night out in Ibiza town. A lot of classical music relies on the ticking clock in the listener's head. It exploits the spaces between the beats. Take this piece by Dvorak, played for us by Stephen Isselis in his own arrangement. right hand subtly tells us what the basic pulse is with its flowing, ticking, short beats. Meanwhile, the cello solo plays a tune with one simple repeated rhythm. So rhythm, stripped down to its bare bones, has a choice of pulses and a choice of speeds. But this is only half the story. To understand how rhythm really works, we have to look at how these pulses are broken up and given different emphasis. In the next part, we're going to get a groove going by putting all these ingredients together. of walking gave us a feel for a regular repetitive beat, left, right, left, right. What's more, it instilled in Homo sapiens an instinct to divide those beats by multiples of two, like our two feet. The minute you start subdividing the pulse is when you have real fun with rhythm. You could take the basic walking pace and count two mini beats for each step. Or four for each step. We tend to subdivide beats into two, but we could in theory divide them into any number we wanted, and various other options have been tried over the centuries. One very popular option is to take two beats and divide them into smaller groups of three. This pattern is one of the mainstays of Anglo-Celtic folk music. Success in this part of the world may have something to do with its resonance with speech patterns and popular poetry. A limerick, for example, follows this exact same subdivision of beats. There was a young lady from Ickenham who went on a bus trip to Twickenham. She drank too much beer, which made her feel queer, so she took off her boots and was sick in them.